Good morning. You know, a client called me. She said she had uh, breathing hunger. And that's that's pretty. That's a pretty intense way to put it. Breathing hunger, and she just couldn't find the the space to breathe and the satisfaction of a of a of a breath coming in. So, first session, I think we found some good things, some holding patterns in her body that restricted her breathing. But the second session, when we really looked in, and I helped her find those places that were held closed, deep, deep places that even there's a muscle on the inside of the ribs, thoracis transversus, that pulls the tips of the ribs down, bends the cartilage between ribs and sternum. And it's like fingers curling around uh, the lungs. If that muscle's tight, if we feel sorrow, we're stuck in those loops of feeling sad and sorrowful. Well, it's not, it's not going to open. There's not going to be room for the breath. And as we did it, we really savored each line of that muscle opening. Even the cinch that's sort of off and around the lower ribs. It's sort of like a belt that cinches people's ribs. We even pandiculated that and helped her brain understand that it could turn it on and sort of fill in the map that the brain has of the body by, by tightening it up with enough effort, very locally, with with careful, with, with a careful quality to come into like a crescendo of those sensations. So the brain says, yes, I know that that place exists. Then the very, very careful diminuendo and doing it in a way that the, bre- the, 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 the relax of the, that line is rewarded by this beautiful experience of the breath coming into that line. Well, we did that. And- She said, uh, wow, more of my breaths are satisfying. She could breathe. And she, we really looked at, you know, what, what is happening in our breathing when we feel anxiety with anxiety, we're run. I propose mostly anxiety is when you're running out of room to breathe. That's what's happening. That's what's, that's room. That's cause for, you know, alarm. The primary function of your system is to breathe. You know, breathing is movement. Something has to open, something has to close. And as the tensions of the body you know, become more and more habituated, well, soon, there's like nowhere, nowhere to breathe. People say diaphragmatic breathing. Well, if all this is rigid up here, if the ribs can't move and that can't change its shape, the back is, if the back is tight that's pushing forward against the ribs, well, the, then that's not the space. If the front is closed and we're in worry and sadness a lot, Okay, if we're stuck in those tensions, that, we're not going to breathe there. If we have asymmetrical tension, we're not going to breathe there. And soon, if abdomen's tight, well, with fear possibly, or just tight because it got a lot of practice at being strong. Uh, soon, there's like no room to breathe. That is what I help people look at. In fact, almost all my movements, I have about 100 movements, very specialized for different lines and different vectors of movement, different combinations of muscles, very precise, and some are very big, broad brush strokes. Well, almost all the movements are really breathing. That's how we get stuck. That's the root of the stuckness is our breathing patterns. And you could have foot pain or heel pain or thumb pain or wrist pain or headaches. I promise, as I show people how to self-assess, I pro- I, I, I'm, I'm always surprised that yes, it's true. It all comes back to breathing restriction. That's the question. And how do you free yourself from the holding patterns? Your brain is running them. In a way, you're trapping yourself. And I could, I can help you explore it, and I can show you that you can free yourself as well. That's a really cool experience. I'm Eric Cooper, InspireSomatics.com. Blessings on your journey.